Good afternoon book lovers of the internet, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am going to be reviewing a highly anticipated book, I suppose, and this review was also quite highly anticipated. Many of you have been asking me to read and review Percy Jackson and the Olympians Volume 7, Wrath of the Triple Goddess by Rick Riordan, so I want to take just a moment to appreciate how beautiful the cover is. And this one, as I mentioned in my unboxing video, also has a sprayed edge, which is also delightful to look at, as I've said on several occasions. So, um, I rated this one 3 out of 5 stars, and it has about 320 pages. So 3 out of 5 stars isn't a bad rating, and I will tell you exactly why I didn't rate it any higher. So, first of all, this took me way longer than I anticipated to finish. I thought it would take me 3 to 4 days to read. It only has 39 chapters, after all, it is a relatively quick read, but it took me closer to 2 weeks to finish. So apologies for the delay with the review, but... This is also one of the very first books in my collection with a sprayed edge, and it does look absolutely stunning. I am very happy to have it in my collection. Let me know whether I should put it on my bookshelf um, with the sprayed edge facing um, outwards, or whether I should place it the way it would usually go um, in the comment section. Let me know which you think is the best idea. So... As enjoyable as this was, without Uncle Rick's writing, the story would have been pretty boring. It's a very simple idea for a story, and I'm pretty sure um, he has done this several times, but I was just too young to figure out how simplistic the plot actually was. It was a very entertaining read, I can't lie about that, but Rick Riordan knows that we love the characters he's shaped over several years, and he understands how we absolutely appreciate his style, and... Despite all of this, this one felt as though not much effort went into it where the plot is concerned, and at this point I would feel as though the only thing keeping um, Riordan's legacy alive is the nostalgic element, but as I'm saying this, it also sounds like an unfair remark, because as a new fan of Percy Jackson, I probably would have enjoyed this as well. I'm speaking here from the perspective of a guy who's been reading Rick Riordan for over a decade now, so um, keep that in mind if you disagree with me. So, um, Percy is doing his best to get into a good college, and he needs three recommendation letters. This is the main premise of this new spin-off series, I suppose. And in the previous book, he got his first one, and in this one, his second. So yeah, there will be some minor spoilers. Some of this is perhaps pretty self-explanatory because you would expect certain things to happen. But it's hard to believe that it's already been a year since I read Chalice of the Gods and Percy got his first recommendation letter. And now I am reading about him getting his second one already. So yeah, from now on there will be some heavier spoilers ahead, so feel free to click away. Um, he's tasked with taking care of Hikate's pets for a week, yet everything goes haywire when Grover drinks a strawberry milkshake. And yeah, basically the story spirals off from there. And the mythology is as interesting as always, and Percy's adrenaline never fails to create flow. And yeah, the pun was intended because he is the son of Poseidon, god of the sea. And just to give you some context, Hikate is basically the triple goddess. She um, is a sorceress, a witch. She is a very powerful goddess, and I didn't expect her to be um, such a prominent figure in any of the Percy Jackson books or in Olympus at all. So yeah, one thing I really enjoyed was the humor. It's very simple, so um, it's not something that I would have loved that if anyone else said it, probably, unless it was some very quick comment, you know, but if Riordan has this in mind and he is using humor through the characters we know and love, um, yeah, it comes across as simple and effective, it got me to giggle or chuckle, and I'm of course not ex 
excluding the potty related type of humor so there is a lot of that by the way because Gale has a stomach issue and he basically farts all the time then there is a hellhound called Nope which um, Percy, Annabeth and Grover and another hellhound called Hecuba adopt basically and Nope pees all the time since he is only a baby hellhound I suppose so this is a, certainly a trait I appreciate in Rarden's writing since he's raising awareness about the issues people, I mean before, yeah, before mentioning this, I, I told you that there are 39 chapters which aren't too long and easy to read, and one thing that I really appreciate about this is that he is trying to raise a lot of awareness about the issues people with ADHD, ADD, dyslexia, and other such conditions face through Percy's character, which is of course also reflected in the simplicity and fun writing style, so I'm not quite sure about the demographic Riordan has in mind, um, but he does seem to be keeping in mind that we have an audience whose attention span is being destroyed through social media. He has readers who might have issues when it comes to um, reading at length. And he also paid attention to the font used. I mean, it's very simple to read and very accessible, I would say. Not the story itself, the font. So I want it to be very specific. I think it's a brilliant idea. And I appreciate that about Riordan. I'm not sure if he's making the... Um, if he's taking the decision to create these changes in his writing, but he seems to be very aware of what is going on. So I don't, I didn't think of Hecate as such a formidable goddess, but when it comes to making decisions, she can be absolutely frightening. And making decisions is a very important thing in anybody's life, really. And when you have a goddess pressuring you into making a decision, where you can't really say no, and then she puts all the blame on you. Um, there are some things you have to be aware of, and I was surprised that Percy Jackson actually told her everything that happened towards the end of the story, um, after they, ha they had spent so much time trying to eliminate all the damage they had caused. I'm pretty sure she could have fixed all the issues they caused um, very simply, but she probably would have killed them. I think she genuinely appreciated Percy's honesty here, so, I mean, speaking of Percy a lot, there are other characters, of course. For instance, Annabeth did quite an awesome job in this one, too, considering that she had nothing to do with the mess Grover caused, and that she was only helping Percy as his girlfriend. That is one more thing that I really love about um, these newer Percy Jackson installments. Um, we get to see the relationship between Percy and Annabeth flourish, and... It's not really hidden anymore because Riordan knows that his audience is growing and maturing and that they have feelings that they can now relate to more than when they were kids. So what's interesting as well is how characters from previous books were brought up. For instance, uh, Chiron, who was a centaur and a mentor, and also some people, some um, mythological beings Percy Jackson killed all the way in the second book, The Sea of Monsters, and that he had forgotten all about. Um, he didn't really know that he was the one who caused their deaths, basically. Um, if I recall, they're called Dedra and Pedra. Not sure if I'm saying that properly. Let me know in the comment section if I say anything that doesn't really ring a bell. So there's also some more information which I would like to share because I think it's very important, especially um, prior to reading the third book in this new series, of course it will probably take another year for us to get another installment, if we do. So Percy's mom is pregnant, by the way, and we're hoping, we're crossing our fingers that he gets a mortal brother. So she seems to be quite happy in the relationship she is in with this guy called Paul Blowfist, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, hopefully Percy will get a mortal brother for a change. So in a nutshell... To conclude this summary review sort of video, um, this was an enjoyable read, but I've either outgrown Percy or Riordan needs to write a more complex story for the fans who've been experiencing his writing for over a decade and are looking for some more grit. I felt as though that was one of the things that this book was missing, although it is action packed. Um, some of the consequences, you know, considering how horrible they could be. 
Um, they're not explained in a way that makes them sound so threatening, and I feel as though Riordan could do a much better job at um, making them sound as grim as possible to keep the readers even more engaged. So I'm not sure with regard to what demographic he has in mind, but I'm glad that he's back. Both Riordan and both Percy and Abed Grover, all the characters I'm in love with at this point, and I'll certainly be one of the very first people in the world to read book 8, uh, much like I was with book 7. So I hope you enjoyed this review of Percy Jackson and the Olympian's Wrath of the Triple Goddess by Rick Riordan. If you did, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, check out the rest of my content, because why not? It's absolutely amazing. If you didn't enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like anyway, because you'll probably find something interesting on my channel, whether you enjoyed this video or not. And yeah, very important for you guys to leave a like. Uh, many of you asked me to make this video and have been looking forward to this one for a long time. I also just uploaded a couple of shorts, um, and in some of them I spoke about this book to further express my emotions and my thoughts on the seventh Percy Jackson book. So yeah, once again, uh, thanks for watching, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one hopefully very, very soon. Bye guys.